Okay, this tutorial is on quantum numbers and assigning uh, different electrons to uh, quantum numbers, or uh, where, like, they're, it's actually kind of a way to describe their location on an atom is by uh, assigning these things called quantum numbers. So it's a set of four numbers that you assign, and it looks like this. So it it's a, it goes parentheses and then it has a, a number here, here, and I'll describe what these variables mean um, in the upcoming slides. Okay, it has a, something called the magnetic number and then a spin number, which is m sub s, like that, and then close parentheses. So a set of four numbers and it describes all where an electron is. So let's say for example, if you have um, let's say if you have sulfur, and it and the configuration for sulfur would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, uh, 3s2, 3p4. Okay, so that's the electron configuration. Now, quantum numbers will describe specifically, so that's that would be 16 electrons, right? And uh, these this set of quantum numbers will tell you specifically it's more specific than an electron configuration. Okay, it'll tell you inside the p orbital or the p sublevel where is like the first out of these six electrons. Okay, so um, so here's all this. It's kind of like this coding system, like a numbering scheme. So the first uh, number tells you the energy level, which is n here. Okay, so it tells you what um, what the principal energy number is. The next number is actually out of that sublevel, what specific orbital is it in? Okay, and so there's a numbering system. If it's, uh, if it's, oh, I'm sorry, um, sorry, the uh, second number tells you exactly what sublevel. Okay, so, and a zero is assigned to an S. So if it's, for example, if the first two numbers here is one comma zero, then we're talking about a 1s. So the principal number is 1. So remember this is the this number here is the principal number, principal energy level. It's the principal energy level. Okay, this the second number here is telling you the sublevel and there's just a numbering scheme. 0 means means a s and then 1 is a p, 2 is a d and 3 is an f. So if the first two numbers here is 1 and then 0, we're talking about a 1s orbital. Okay, if the first two numbers were, were a 3 comma 0, then we're talking about a 3s orbital. Okay, the next number is um, this magnetic number, and it tells you out of those, within that sublevel, what exact orbital is, is the electron in. Okay, so for, um, for an s orbital, it can only be the possible magnetic number is only a zero because it's only one orbital. Every s sublevel is only made of one orbital. If it's a p, the possible magnetic numbers for p, so all of these, this picture here, this is all trying to describe the magnetic number. Okay, and if it's a p sublevel, it could the uh, orbital could lie in the z axis, it could be in the x axis, or it could be in the y axis. So um, the next number then for uh, 3s, okay, it has to if you if this is zero, the next number it has to be zero because um, it, the s orbital only has one, or the s sublevel only has one orbital. Now if this were a p. Okay, so let's say it was the first number was a 3 and then a 1. Okay, this, the next number, which is the magnetic number, this could be, um, it could be a negative 1, a 0, or a positive 1. Okay, and that just, that just tells you, like, what orientation the orbital it, it's in. So that's the magnetic number. Lastly is the spin number. So it's either negative half or positive half, and this tells you, um, so the next number would be either a positive one half or a negative one half, and this just tells you if it's spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, so a 
couple of things about the magnetic number. So if, when you get to the D sub level, then the D sub level is made of five orbitals and they're all, actually all connecting. Okay, they actually don't exist uh, separately like this, although textbooks always show it like that. They're actually all overlapping on this middle center node here. Okay, so that's the D, um, the D sub level. So notice the magnetic numbers. Since there's five orbitals, there are actually five possibilities for the magnetic number. Okay, so it goes. It's kind of like a number number line. So it goes negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, positive two. Um, and then when you get to an F sub level, then there are seven or seven orientations the orbital may be. So you could have seven different numbers for the magnetic number. Okay, so let's look at a couple of practice questions. So, oh, here's a picture of uh, the spin number. So this uh, this slide. So it's either spinning uh, clockwise, which would be assigned a plus one half, or the electron might be spinning counterclockwise. And what this does is it creates like a, a little bit of a magnet here. So that these are not, so they normally they would be repelling but since uh, they have clockwise and counterclockwise uh, countering spins, it creates a little magnet. So it actually creates a little bit of an attractive force within the uh, if they have to occupy the same orbital, the electrons. So that's why when we did these, the orbital diagrams. So first of all, we only had one box under the 1s because there's only one orbital. And then on the p, notice that when we did those orbital diagrams, the p actually had three. And this represented the uh, three different um, orientations that the p orbital can be in okay, so for, for each box. And when you put an arrow up and down, this is what you're saying. One spins clockwise, the other goes counterclockwise. OK, so. Um, so here's the Pauli exclusion principle, a little bit more on that. So it, it states that no two electrons can have the same set of four quantum numbers. So it's kind of like a, uh, they're specific. So every electron has its own set of four quantum numbers. So I used sulfur as an example earlier. So out of this configuration for sulfur, Um, all 16 of these electrons will have their very own set of four quantum numbers. Okay, and uh, Pauli exclusion principle (PEP) limits the number of electrons that can op occupy an orbital to two. So this this stuff we already know. Okay, so here's here's the, and I, I've been kind of describing this already. So this right here is the principle energy level. This is the actual, this is the sub-level. So a 0 is S, a 1 is a P, a 2 is a D, and if this number is a 3, then that electron that has these four numbers is in an F orbital, if, okay, if this second number is a 3. Um, and then this one is uh, the orientation or the specific orbital that it's in. Okay, and then this is the spin number. Okay, and to relate it to something that we've already covered, um, N is actually this entire box, that's N. Okay, L is the sublevel, so L would be like this right here, so that would be L. Okay, and the specific orbital or the magnetic number is which one of these is the electron in? Is it here, here, or here? So this one represents the uh, the magnetic number, okay. And then the spin number is once you go inside the orbital, which way is the electron spinning? Is it this way or is it this way? Okay. So the actual electron itself and its spin is the spin number. So let's try a couple practice ones, a couple practice questions. So examples. <clears throat> so a quantum number for electrons occupying a 1s orbital. Um, it could have two different quantum numbers because this would be 1s2. So you could have uh, you could have the 1s1 electron or the 1s2 electron. Okay, we'll have their very own quantum numbers. So that's it. That's, those are the only two possibilities. Okay, for an electron that's in a 1s orbital, it's either spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. And again, this means that uh, the s is zero. 
this number here is this, the magnetic number, and there's only one orbital, okay, for an S. So there's only one possibility for the magnet, magnetic number possibility. Okay, so two electrons in a 3S subshell will have quantum numbers like this. Okay, so again, it's an S orbital, so this is only one possibility. Okay, to go back to, if we go back to this picture here, so we see again that this only has one possible number it could be. So that's why it had that. Okay, um, six electrons in a 3P subshell sub, sub or sublevel would have the following quantum numbers. So a 3P would look like this. It could be three. Uh, and then um, the next number would have to be a 1. Okay, because uh, the code for the next number, again, was a 0 is S, a 1 is a P, okay, a 2 is a D. If that second number were 3, it'd be an F. Okay, here's where, here's where it could be three different things. So it could either be, um, it could either be this, I can't, can't even draw an 8. So it could be here, here, or here. X, Y, or Z. X, Y, Z. Okay, so this number can be a negative 1. It could be a 0. And it could be a positive 1, that number. Okay, and then, so we're going to have like 6 possibilities because there's 6 electrons in a 3, the maximum, there's a, a possible 6 electrons. Okay, so it could be either spinning uh, counterclockwise or... Here's where we get two possibilities. Or in that same orientation could be spinning counterclockwise like that. Okay, and in this same exact setup, it could be spinning the other way. Okay, and then uh, in this magnetic number, it could be spinning two ways. It's supposed to be plus one clockwise. Okay, so try these for uh, practice. Okay, so it says, which of the following sets of quantum numbers are not allowed in the hydrogen atom for... Um, now, one little note here on C. This is hypothetical. So could it have these this set of quantum numbers? Could an electron have that set of quantum numbers? So is it possible? I'll do the first one, and then you guys are responsible for B, C, and D. So for this one, this is a this is a uh, two orbital of a principal number two. When L is one, again that coding a one meant a p orbital. Okay, so this is talking about a two. So these are my quantum numbers: two, one, negative one. Okay, and then this didn't. This doesn't matter. So it's saying like, which of the following? So is this possible? Can I possibly have that? So it's a. Uh, this would be talking about a two. Okay, a a p. A one is a p. And can p have a negative one magnetic spin? It can. This is a. If you go back to your your picture handout, it could p could be like this, this, or. Um, like this, so it could be X, Y, or Z. Okay, and the negative one, so this is possible. Okay, so this is possible, the first one. Okay, and that's...